Choma's obsession with marrying a wealthy man led her to make poor decisions, hurting herself and her family in the process. She learned that not everything that appears valuable on the outside truly is, and that genuine happiness and fulfillment comes from love, honesty, and integrity, not material possessions. Choma was born into a poor home. Growing up, she vowed never to have anything to do with poverty. Soon, suitors began to come to ask for her hand in marriage. Choma was an epitome of beauty. Tall, smart, and pretty, she was the dream girl of most men. But then, Choma kept rejecting her suitors because she wants to marry a very wealthy man. Then Ebuka, a funny witty man, came for her hand in marriage. She liked him but refused his offer because he didn't strike to her as a wealthy person. Their mother was very worried about Choma's approach to life and understanding of fortune. One late night, she called her daughter to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with her about marriage and the repercussions of her selective attitude. She also told her that her attitude might affect the younger sister as her getting married solely depends on when the elderly one does. So in some traditions in Igbo land, the younger sister doesn't get married if the eldest does not get married. The younger sister will have to wait patiently until the elder daughter gets married, leaves the house before the second daughter thinks of leaving the house as well. When Ebuka insisted that he really wanted to marry her, Chioma asked him to marry the younger sister who shares a striking resemblance with her. He accepted and the marriage plans kicked up and Mma accepted the marriage proposal as well. Towards the preparation of the wedding, Ebuka started showing excess wealth, buying expensive clothes, bags, shoes, and jewelries for the wife-to-be. So when Choma saw this, she became very confused and angry. She felt cheated that the guy was rich all the while but played the poverty role. So she angrily visited a native doctor who gave her a charm to make Ebuka return back to her. So on the day of the bride prize, Ebuka and his people came. And when the bride came out to welcome her husband-to-be, Ebuka suddenly began to act strange. He said Ma was not his chosen bride, but Chioma. He started asking why Ma was wearing same clothes with him instead of Chioma. This was so strange and everyone was surprised. Poor Ma, she fainted as a result of the shock. Choma on her part pretended not to know what was happening. She looked as confused as others. Meanwhile, she was the master planner. Ebuka kept running after Choma, begging her to marry him in front of everyone. But Choma kept acting ignorant of the whole situation. The entire event was messed up and people began to find their way home. It was a very unusual wedding ceremony. So after the wedding day that was never completed, Ebuka was still very persistent with wanting to marry Choma. What a confused man, Choma and Ma's parents thought. First, you came for Choma. Then Choma refused and approved of Ma to marry you. Everyone agreed and the wedding preparation kicked off. Only for you to embarrass us all on the wedding day, saying you were given the wrong wife. What is wrong with this man? They thought again. Every day, Ebuka visited Choma's family, pleading with Choma to marry him. Initially, they continuously chased him away. But when they saw Ebuka was not giving up, Mma, who was now much better after her wedding episode, 
advised Choma to give him a chance and as well pleaded with her parents to let Ebuka be as she had already forgiven the embarrassment and moved on. So in no time, Chioma and Ebuka got married. As Ebuka and Chioma's wedding ceremony got concluded and they moved back to their base, the people Ebuka collected loan from in order to present himself as a big boy started coming for their payments. Chioma realized that Ebuka had scammed her and that he actually had nothing. Mma, on the other hand, has a very wealthy man now coming for her hand in marriage. And just in a short while, the wedding took place. So it happened that when Chioma rejected Ibuka's hand in marriage, just because he wasn't as rich as she wanted, saying her younger sister Mma can marry him, Ibuka felt bad. And so he decided to make Chioma feel bad as well. He then went ahead and borrowed money and cars from his friends just to get back at Chioma and make her regret not marrying him. Chioma, now very uncomfortable and unhappy with her marriage, and now seeing her younger sister very married to a good hearted and a wealthy man, she began to lament morning and night, wondering why her sister always gets the things she wishes. Chioma began to ask herself why her sister Mma effortlessly gets everything she worked so hard to have. That morning, after visiting her favorite doctor's spot, Chioma took off with anger in her heart and suddenly showed up in Mma's house, demanding to see her husband. Chioma's whole attitude was so strange to Mma that morning. As she started insisting so hard to see Ma's husband, even after Ma told her that her husband was sleeping. Just after a while, Choma started screaming that she is running out of time. At this point, Ma had to call their mother and as well refuse her access to see her husband as she was increasingly acting suspicious. By the time their mother came, Choma was already confessing her crimes and acting like she was losing her senses. I went to a native doctor's house to make Ebuka lose interest in Mma. I made Ebuka to think only about me because I felt Ebuka was rich and can give me the good life I crave for, she confessed. Then when I realized my mistake, I didn't still learn. Instead, I wanted to turn your husband to myself. Chioma had a time frame to touch the man if the juju must walk or run mad. This justifies why she was shouting and insisting to see Ma's husband. Their mother, who arrived shortly after Ma phoned her, as she lived close by, was shocked at Chioma's confession. She couldn't imagine that her own daughter could do such a thing to her own sister. Chioma learned the hard way that all that glitters is no gold. Chioma's story teaches us an important lesson about the dangers of valuing material wealth over genuine character and love. Her obsession with marrying a wealthy man led her to make poor decisions, hurting herself and her family in the process. She learned that not everything that appears valuable on the outside truly is and that genuine happiness and fulfillment comes from love, honesty, and integrity, not material possessions. By valuing superficial wealth, Choma ended up with a deceitful husband and an unhappy marriage. In contrast, her sister Mma, who was kind and genuine, found true happiness with a good-hearted, wealthy man. Choma's experience with Ebuka, who pretended to be rich, to teach her a lesson showed that deceit and manipulation bring only temporary gains and long-term misery. Ultimately, her actions led to regret and suffering, highlighting the importance of making wise and sincere choices. This story reminds us that the glitter of gold can be deceptive. True wealth is found in the love, respect, and kindness we share with others. 
It teaches us to appreciate the real value of people, not just what they appear to possess. So my friends, value character over wealth. Honesty is the best policy. True happiness comes from within. And remember to always learn from your mistakes. Stay true to yourself and you will find real happiness and success in life. So if you enjoy our videos as much as I do, please remember to subscribe, like and share out our videos. Also comment under the comment section for your feedback is very important to us. See you again on our next one.